Well, welcome to Macroeconomics, and we're going to cover a basic model now called the circular flow of income, and this will help you understand any economy at any point in time. That's quite awesome, isn't it, really, you might say. Anyhow, we've got households, and households own all the factors of production. There are four, of course, as you know, maybe from micro and maybe even from geography. We've got labour, land, capital and enterprise. And these are owned by the household, as I said, and these are combined by the firms to produce goods and services. So if we do the real flow in red, okay, the real flow of labour, land, capital and enterprise comes from households to firms. Households supply firms with labour, for example. In exchange for that labour, okay, they receive income, they receive factor payments. So in exchange for labour, they receive wages, for land rent, for capital they receive interest, and what the Marx is obviously keen on, enterprise, for enterprise they receive profit. And we can show this as the monetary flow, we can show it in blue on the, on the diagram. And so what we have here are factor payments, okay, which I've outlined, for factor services, which is what you read. So we've got the factor services here, and the factor payments are often called income. When you add up all the factor payments together, they're called income, and the symbol for income in economics is Y. So the income all goes to the households. What do the households do with that income? They spend it on goods and services. So the real flow of goods and services comes from firms to the household, okay, and that's actual real goods and services, okay. Uh, for instance, it could be a nice bit of coffee or from a nice coffee shop, um, iPhones, iPads, uh, dresses, shirts, etc. All these goods and services supplied from firms to households. And in exchange for that, of course, firms provide, firms receive uh, consumption. So household consumption as the symbol C in economics, and that is that, that is consumption, okay, of goods and services. Uh, consumption is rather important in the economy. The level of consumption increases when the level of economic activity increases as income increases. So consumption goes up. Firms produce more goods and services, then household income will generally increase. Um, however. We've got the income side here, and this is consumption, the expenditure side, that there are a few other variables we need to consider. So sometimes households won't spend all their income. Indeed, they actually save some income. So we have saving, which is a withdrawal from the circular flow. And unfortunately, for some, households also pay taxes, and taxes go to the government, of course, and that's another withdrawal from the circular flow. And indeed, people often like buying imports. So we also have imports as a withdrawal from the circular flow. So basically we have three withdrawals of expenditure from the circular flow. But on the other side we've got three injections into the circular flow. Um, savings often accrue in a bank and banks sometimes enable firms to invest in the economy in new capital for example. So we've got investment as an injection into the circular flow. We've got government expenditure as an injection into the circular flow. And of course, we've got exports, okay, from abroad. The cash, the money for it, exports, is injected into, circular, into the circular flow. So we've got three injections and three withdrawals. So if the economy is to remain in equilibrium and balance, okay, and income is not going to increase, we need the level of withdrawals to equal the level of injections into the circular flow. So those two are balanced, then the circular flow will remain stable. Now the key issue is, um, on the expenditure side, if we all add, add all the key components together, we get aggregate demand, it's the same as expenditure basically, and aggregate demand is basically, we'll, we'll do it in black, make it clearer. There's, there's four components of aggregate demand, okay, which is basically the expenditure in the economy, we've got consumption, investment, government expenditure, and exports minus imports. So 
is basically the injections into the economy, take away imports from exports, of course, so we get net exports, government extension investment, and of course, consumption. That makes up aggregate demand in the economy, which is basically all the expenditure. And if aggregate demand increases, then it's going to lead to an increase in the level of income in the economy, and the level of economic activity might go up, and certainly the level of employment may increase in an economy. And so basically, for, let's just look at an example. If saving were to increase, there would be less household consumption, firms would produce fewer goods and services, and household income would fall. Okay, and the level of economic activity would decrease. Um, of course, there'd be less aggregate demand, and there may be more unemployment. Look at another situation. Say the government were to cut an increase government expenditure, say by borrowing, um, this would increase the injections into the economy, the level of firms produce more goods and services, um, incomes would increase, and the level of economic activity would increase in the economy, and unemployment might fall. Um, so this is basically the circular flow of income, and it should help you understand what happens to an economy when, ceteris paribus, other things being equal, we change any of these variables in the economy. So thank you very much. I hope that makes sense.